it's Sarah and I'm back I want to do some more watercoloring with you guys Maya's not here <laughs> she went home but thank you all so much for your comments she is a joy the joy of our lives she's just the sweetest little kid she really is um and you guys seem to enjoy her too so anyway I'm back to watercolor what I found was when we were just playing last night and I mentioned that I'm a heavy hand. That's what they consider someone who puts a lot of paint on their brush and goes right in with paint. I've always been considered that in with my decorative painting um, and everything like that. But with floating, I learned how to get around it or you can mop it up a little bit. And um, with the watercolor, what I'm finding is once you kind of put it down on the paper, you're that's it you can't really pull it back up you can kind of tap the surface with a paper towel and you can get the color up a little bit but i think the best bet with this is uh to start out light you can always add more color so um that's what i'm gonna share with you guys now i want to show a few of the things i did um these are just three the, the images we're gonna i'm gonna use today i'm gonna do a walkthrough with you i'm calling it i don't know um it's real time and several people have mentioned that they like when I do um, walkthroughs in real time because a lot of people speed them up sometimes and it's nice to to kind of do it in real time so um, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to use these two Stampendous issue, uh, issues images I've got boots she is super cute she reminds me of an Angelica from the Rugrats it's called boots kiddo and then this one's bouquet kiddo um, so we're going to do those together and I, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use two different techniques, a couple different techniques. So these are the ones I made this one um, with Maya yesterday and I mean she's okay. It's very painterly. That's the word too. I mean you can see it's not neat and tidy and it's you know but I don't like how dark it is up under her hair. I don't think that's realistic looking. Um, this one's a bit better. It's just that the the background, um, let's see, I think I did this one next, actually. The face looks a little blotchy, like her pinkness. I still like it. It's painterly, again. Um, and the ground and the sky are much darker, which is good. I mean, it's fine. Her belly is a little dark, but I mean, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Then this one was where I was starting to get, get the hang of it. I still, I made the sky much lighter, but I still made the um, grass dark, and then I added some, like, line work lines to play around with that um i like how her face turned out i'm pretty sure i was starting to do the cheek color from my palette instead of directly from the pen i added a little glitter pen to it and stuff um these i wanted to show you the background on these i think this was the first one i did of this um and again uh, her hairline is really really dark where her skin tones are I mean she's at the beach so I guess you could get away with it and there's all different color skin tones so it's fine I love the background I just started playing and I think I was still applying the color directly to the paper with the pen and then taking my um, paintbrush actually and pulling the color down and and I love the lines that you get um and I didn't want to get too close because, as we know, blue and green, uh, blue and yellow make green. So I didn't want to make the sky green. But it, it's just, it turned out pretty cool. This one, I lightened up a little bit. I still applied the color with, um, the, with the marker. Um, and I like that one much better. She's, she's a lot lighter um, skin tone shades. They're not as dark. I, I try not to be as harsh. Um, and then what do I have next? This one I just really, I, I really actually, I like this sky with the dark yellow in the sky. But this one's just the similar one, but just a little bit of yellow up there. And her face again got really pink and blotchy. And I'm going to show you, I think I applied her cheeks with the pen. And I'm going to show you how I do it now because it's just a lot more control. You have a lot more control. And then this finally, and then we'll start. But these two, again, this is a Stampendous image. Um, the coloring was fine. I, I mean, I turned out fine and everything. I didn't do the sidewalk, which I ended up doing on this one, which I love. But just the the sky is way too dark for me. I think I, I would like it to be a lot more watery. And it, that way it would look like cloudy sky or just, I don't know. I, this is too coloring book, I like to say. That's like a, one description I always use. But, I mean, not horrible. This one's, again, it's still a little dark for me, the sky. I like it, but I think 
I love the grass, how I kind of just put the dark up against the sidewalk and then kind of watered it down this way and went back and added the lines for detail. So I'm starting to play. I love the sidewalk. I think that color is actually frayed burlap, I want to say that I did, because I don't have pumice stone, which I need, and I'm hoping, I think that might be in the, um, this is frayed burlap, but I think pumice stone is like a little bit of a grayish, um, yeah, this is frayed burlap. That's what I used on the um, sidewalk. The other thing about these images, I was using my um, Sakura um, jelly roll pens on the eyes and things, and I don't think I'm going to do that anymore either. I'll use this for highlighting. Like, I love it on little, her hair bobs and things like that. Um, but on, for the eyes, it just makes them a little too crazy looking, and I've gotten, um, I've done a couple different things with eyes. So let's get started. I'll show you what, um, what we're going to do. So the first one we're going to do is this one. Um, she's such a sweet little uh, card. I'm going to do her exactly the way I did her here. I'm going to move this to the side. I moved my light over too, so um, I'm right-handed, so I don't think it'll be as much of a shadow. Um, and so I'm going to get started. Uh, I've stamped this with VersaFine ink because I think it's a, it's a detail ink. It's a permanent pigment ink for fine details. And... Um, I think it, it really does a good job with stamping. So that's black. Yeah, just black of that. And I'm using the um, watercolor paper by, um, where the heck is it? I said this yesterday, the Strathmore watercolor paper, 140 pound. And this is the smooth side. Cody suggested the smooth side, so I've been going with the, the smooth side since she mentioned that. I've tried both sides, but um, for today I'll be doing the smooth side first thing I like to do on her is the pink. I love to get my pink down. And for that, I am just going to go with the, um, the pen, directly with the pen onto the piece. So I'll show you. First I do her little hair bows. And I try to keep the ink where the shading would be. And basically just, just put a little bit of color where it would be the darkest. Because we're going to pull that color up into the design. This, her little tutu I make pink and I really just keep it at the her belly line and then I'm gonna put a little bit um, underneath on the little piece that pokes out. And I'm just doing that solid color. But this will be like, it'll look shaded. Then her boots of course. And I'm gonna do just up in between the laces. I'll fill that in. And a little bit on the bottom but this is how I've decided that I can get a light result because if I okay all right I'm gonna stop talking for me I have to think all right good that's all my pink and it's kind of nice because now I just go back and I am using a water brush I just filled it up and a lot of times when you see tutorials with people using the water brush, they don't like the water brush because they don't have enough control. They prefer using, but when you squeeze it, the water comes down into this barrel and then you can kind of see that it's wet. And it gets quite wet, so I'm going to blot it a little bit. I don't want it to be too wet. And I'm going to come back to my, um, I'm going to start with the skirt since I know my brush is really wet. And I just stay in the dark part and kind of squiggle the color into the light part and that's it see how soft the okay babe the result is such a soft look she has pink boots I mean they're not like Copic pink boots but they're pink and you you have the darkness and the lightness and you can always come back and add more so don't feel like that's got to be the the last say of the whole thing you know um, that's the thing, but you can't really take it off. Once it soaks into the paper, I haven't found, I mean, and I, you know, I'm a beginner. I'm pretty, I've, I've watercolored before. I've definitely watercolored before with acrylics. Um, but that's it. Look how soft and sweet. I mean, it's really, and this pink is a beautiful color. This is the lipstick I'm thinking. Sorry, I can't find the word. Worn lipstick, yep. Um, so now I'm going to go and do my hair. That is, this color is my favorite color for hair right now. It's called Wild Honey. 
and again I'm just going to use the, the tip I used the brush tip end of the um I think I I hope that wasn't 10 minutes already anyway start in the dark area and just pull the color down into these lighter areas and that way you have a little bit of shading and highlighting going on and that's it I like there's a line going across and I've um, decided that on my other one I like how I don't that's why I don't do the skin tone first because I probably would have gone straight across with the skin tone but I like how the hair kind of comes over all right let's do we'll do her shirt real quick because I'll do the skin last her shirt I just take this yellow and go where I think it would be darkest a little here and a little here and then that's it. And I mean, this yellow is such a pretty color. I'll tell you the color. Mustard seed. So pretty. And just rub it around. And now you'll have lights and darks instantly because I haven't put ink all over the place. I love that pink and yellow together. So cute. All right. Now I'm going to do skin. Now, what I've found with the skin is I can go straight on with the skin tone. That's fine. But when I get to cheeks, I am not going to add the cheeks with the pen. I'll show you what I do. And I just pretty much color and leave a little bit of white in the middle. That's what I've been doing. I kind of go all around, leave the white in the middle. That's really all I'm doing. And I'm kind of pretty much just for the belly, I go on both sides and leave white in the middle. And these little areas are so small that you can't, you know, if you, um, the ink gets into all the areas pretty much. And then I just wet the paper where I have applied the ink and it kind of moves over to this white area and it's a little lighter version of that color. So see, I mean, it's filling in, it's getting skin tone color, but it's not as dark as where I put it down exactly with the pen. So then you get your graduation of color. So see, she's got a little lightness and I'm gonna add cheeks in a minute. So let's just add a little water to the rest of her skin areas. I like it, I like the lightness of it. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, so she's pretty much colored in. Isn't that adorable? Um, gonna let her face just uh, dry a little bit and I'm, I'll show you how I do the background. Now, the, I only have a couple colors of blue. And I wished I had these because I wanted to shade around the edges. Like I did go around the edges with the blue, but it's a different color blue. And then on this one, I did end up going, well, when's it that one? No, this one. I ended up um, putting some on my palette and putting it on a, um, a sponge applicator. So let's see. Let's see. I like this color. And then I've also put two colors on. So let's go. First, I'm just going to use this color, which I love. It's Tumble Glass. And I just rub it right on my craft mat. And last night we were using um, a stamp block because that you can use that for a palette too. And then I have a nice wet brush. Make sure that it's wet. Yep. I like it. Actually, the wetter the better when you do the background. It's much better wet and just pick up some color and I start at the top and just work my way down. Just start moving the water around and pull it. And don't worry about going right up to the edge of the image and leave it blotchy and puddly in some areas and leave it kind of um, messy is really the word I want to use. I mean, you don't, you don't want to, you know, it's hard to say that you want it messy, but you really kind of do just be messy. And that's it. I like to put it up under her arm a little. But look, I mean, I'm going to wipe my um, area here so I don't put anything in it. But that's it. And that's the thing I love about uh, watercoloring. I mean, it's, it's very forgiving, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to put a little grass down there on her. I think I used my lighter color grass. But I might not have. I think I'm going to use this. This is such a pretty green. Peeled paint. 
is the color. And again, onto my palette or my um, craft sheet. Pick some up on the brush, and I start now at the um, horizon line, I guess you would say. So pull it and just walk your way down with it. Pull it down, and the blotchier the better. Like, don't try to make it uh, perfect and keep it like maybe more water than color actually. Put it in between. Now that's a little crooked, so of course I gotta fix that because it's gonna make me crazy, but that's it. And that is it. I mean, how simple and fast is that? So the last little part of her is her cheeks, and I'm gonna do the same technique. Now, each time I use a color, I'm just taking the water brush and wiping it so that I end up with clear water again. And I use this worn lipstick for her cheek color. And you only need a little bit. So I just put a little bit on my palette. I don't even know if I'm in the shot with that. I'm not. You can't really even see it. It's a tiny bit of color here. And I'm picking it up and I'm adding it right under on that apple of her cheek there. Right there on the apple of her cheek. Just a little pink. And then I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to work just water to soften the edges. And that's it. Look how sweet she is. This is so fun, you guys. It's such a quick result. And it's really easy. It's not, I don't know, I'm finding it so easy. I want to show you how I did her eyes. I was, like I said, I was using the, the blue and green Sakura pens. And I don't like that. They look kind of like a zombie, so... And one way you could do it, I was using my um, Inktense pencils, and I do like this. This is a very strong color. This is um, just a piece of scrap paper, and I just put the, the color on there, and then take my water brush and kind of wet it. It's a very green green. Could do the same thing, but I'm going to just put this on the irises of her eyes here. Oops, see, it went into the white. And I did pull it off. You know what? I'm not going to do it. I think I... I think I like this better. Just using the, um, I have a Q-tip. I'm going to just see if I can get the weight of her eye a little whiter. Okay. This is the peeled paint again that I used for the grass. And I'm just using the, the liner um, end of it. And I'm putting it in that iris there. And I got the green there. And I'm just going to tap it with a little bit of water. And it, it turns green. I don't know. Let me show you my original one. Does she have her? See, her eyes look green because I did it right. Because, <laughs> of course, when you're on camera, it doesn't work out. I also have, just if you get the whites of her eyes, um, which annoys me because I like them to be nice and crisp. I mean, that's, you know, her eyes are looking at you. Of course, you have uh, the white Sakura, I'm sorry, Uniball. You know, and I, I have done it, and it's very wet, but I, I'm a stickler. I like the, that to pop. And you can put the little dot there, white again, too. I also take, this is a very cool color. I don't know if that there's the name on here, but it's a glitter, a yellow glitter. So I took this and did her shoelaces. Look at that. That's. I mean, you guys can use your glitter, your real glitter, and a glue pen. But this is so easy. And it adds color and everything while you're at it. I hope I'm not yelling into the camera. And then I added, I also added a little bit to, like, her hair bow. Just a little line, you know, here and there. To give it a little bling. You can add um, your, of course... Secu I mean, I keep saying Sakura now. This one, Wink Estella, which I put on everything pretty much. I think I put this on, where else did I put it on? Oh, just this edge of her little tutu on the top edge. Because her outfit, you know, it's, it's pink and yellow, so she might as well have a little bling going on. And I did put it on her bows. And that's it. So that is your basic... Um, really light-handed coloring of her. Now for this one, I didn't have any purple. So I, of course, found my purple in my distress pads, my ink pads. I don't have any purple distress markers, 
I mean, I have this one, and it's really not purple. That's what Maya was looking for. Victorian velvet. It's a very, very light, 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 light purple. So for this little girl, where'd she go now, my little purple girl? To make her dress purple, I'll show you what I did. I took this milled lavender, and I'm sure I could do it with just this one, but it is a much darker purple, so I wanted to... I'll just show you the way I did it um, so I don't... So I put that on my um, palette. And where's my little image? Here she is. Of course, now I'm out of the shot. All right. And just gently, I load up my water brush with that color and just color in the whole area that I want purple. I'm coloring the whole thing. I'm not worrying about um, shading at the moment at all. Just putting purple. And then this will become the highlight. It'll be the lighter shade of purple after I add the um, Dusty Concord. So I'm putting that all over the image where I want purple. I'm gonna wipe that off and get a little Dusty Concord. And you know, I don't need a ton, so I'm gonna actually just touch this a little bit to my um, craft mat, I don't know. And you know what, you might even be able to come right take it right from the pad, which I haven't tried, so I'm not going to do it right now. But again, I'm going to go into the image with my um, wet brush and just go into the darkest areas now only, not um, where I've, not everywhere, just the darkest areas. So I'm going to go along her little waistline, I guess, over right here and let's see right here and where did I put it on there that's pretty much it and under her arm and you can see that shading I am touching my water brush to the paper towel and just cleaning it off now I have just water and just pulling that dark color. I'm going to add a little bit more where those creases are and a little bit more under her arm. I think we're good. I like that. I think that looks pretty. And, you know, it's not a contest or it's not, you know, I mean, it's your little work of art. So just play. Don't forget to play and just have fun with it. It is fun. I'm finding this very fun. I don't know why. I just am. I think it's super fun. The other thing I did on this one was, this is a really cool color. It's called um, Weathered Wood, and it kind of reminded me of with Copics Zero, what is the freaking, it's B, B, I'm sorry. I am so brain dead. BG10. That you, it's cool, whatever. And you use it for like when things are white, you just outline. So it kind of reminded me of that. It's a little bit um, different, but I'm going to put a little on my palette again and just take a little water, I mean, a little bit of on my brush. And just, I'm going to, I'm kind of wanting these flowers to be white, is what I'm shooting for, you know. So I'm just adding a little bit of, you can't really see it. You know what? I'm going to do it with the, um, this is the, uh, what do they call this end? It doesn't, they didn't write it on here, but it's the sharper end. So again, I'm just taking and putting a little bit of color where it would be darkest, like where there would be a shadow, even though this is white, white still has shadows. Um, and they're usually gray. So I would probably use like pumice stone. I would probably use pumice stone when I get it. Hopefully I'll get pumice stone. And then just wash it over with color. And it's going to just give you a little more interest than if it were, if you just left it stark white. Okay, babe. I mean, that's it. You can't really, you don't see too much of a difference. But it's something. And then also, uh, I think I put on this one, I put the yellow stickles. But this color is so beautiful. This is... Um, mustard seed. So I just put a little mustard seed. I fill these in with the mustard seed and then just 
kind of start on the dark on the light side it's so cool I love it so my husband just got home with our dinner um, I like this green I'm gonna show you what I do with this green you take just stay on the lines of the stems um, put a little bit on the leaves just where the vein is I'm gonna do that little stem and add water just smudge a little water there's that let's see it's looking similar you know and then on one of my little samples I ended up gluing a flower because it was white and the same shape right to that area and I think that's a cool little embellishment for the butterfly, I painted that um, jacquard butterfly, well, it's um, blue gold, I think, but that's more of a dragonfly color, but I did put it on here too, just to pull the green in, um, and I put it away. Oh, let me show you how I did her shoes, and then, I guess, because it's at six minutes. I take the pointy side of the pen and just put the black where the darkest parts would be. and then you add water and it really gives it shading and then I added glossy accents, actually not glossy accents I have been using um, Mod Podge Dimensional Magic I think it's cheaper I'm not sure they're probably very comparable in price actually but there I mean her shoes don't look black black but you can tell they're black like here's the finished one look how cute and they're shiny um, and then again for her face I might as well I'm gonna do her face real quick because um, we're at seven minutes already again I just go straight to the piece with the color and leave a little white in the middle but I go all the way around the face and this one I'm going actually more than the other one because the flowers were there and then you just take it and rub kind of pull it into the middle and that way she has a shaded forehead and there's like some it looks like they're shading and highlighting that looks really pretty and then when that dries up oh, I forgot her ears but when that dries I'll do her cheeks and I think we'll be done just for time's sake and I think I've showed enough um, but this is fun guys I mean I'm enjoying it I think I'm going to cut a few pieces of watercolor paper with my um, dies into shapes that are be nice for cards and then um, I'll do a few that I can use for cards um, the images you know and because these are obviously ATC size because I figured they're just so convenient and easy to work with um, so that's that all right let me just show you her little cheeks so again I take this pink put a little bit on my palette take my brush make sure I don't have any other color on it and just apply it that way that's the best way to apply it wipe my brush off get that color off and now just with water smudge around the edges and look how softly blended that is her cheeks really look blended all right this is so fun you guys I gotta go eat though so that's it for now thanks for watching